Now after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Jesus, being the most holy son of God, the first person whom Jesus appeared after resurrection is a woman. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody was saying, why not men, why women? <coughs> then they said, it's because of women, the news is all over the world. <laughs> if it's a man, nobody will come to know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But now we have to know, Bible is the re-reading of the history. Bible was not written when Jesus was around. It's after the resurrection, the ascension, the disciples gathered together and they have reflected, Jesus is God. And we have to write what he has done. Nobody has ever spoke the way he spoke. Nobody has performed miracles like he performed. There was no one like him. So they started to write the history looking backward. And they say, Mark is the first one who wrote the gospel. Mark. Then comes Matthew, Luke. Only after many years, John wrote a gospel. That's why it is so different. Matthew, Mark and Luke are called synoptic gospel. They are same in the content and in the narration. But John's gospel is different. So the first one who wrote the gospel was Mark. And they say, when Mark was writing the gospel, Mary Magdalene was there because she was already become a disciple. So Mary, uh, so Mark just wrote, now after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Full stop. He stopped there. Mary Magdalene read this and he said, no, this is not enough. You have to explain who was I from whom he had cast out seven demons. That is why we call it good news. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mary Magdalene is telling, let everybody know who was I. I was an outcast, a woman possessed with the seven demons. We have to know seven demons. Seven symbolizes perfection. Seven demons, according to Sister Nadine, who is a spiritual woman who wrote, seven demons symbolizes seven cardinal sins. Have we heard about cardinal sins? Yes. Sins committed by cardinals? No. <laughs> deadly sins. The most deadly sins. Means the root causes of other sins, like anger, pride, jealousy, lust, laziness, greed, gluttony. This woman called Magdalene was possessed totally with all these terrible sins. Jesus not only cast out these demons and made her an apostle of apostles. The name of Saint Mary Magdalene is not just an apostle. Apostle of apostles. Why? Because she is the first woman carried the greatest good news on the whole world. Jesus is risen. That is the good news. That is the gospel. Jesus is risen. This, this Mary took this message to the apostles. That's why she's called Apostle of Apostles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Being a dirty, filthy person. She became such a huge saint. And you are seated in front of that same Jesus who made a prostitute a saint. Amen. Amen. Smile, please. <laughs> we are hope. Maybe you are in this deliverance retreat. Maybe uh, we are possessed with a small demon of lust. Maybe jealousy, anger. Not with all the seven demons, isn't it? Definitely. Smile, please. Jesus has casted out seven demons. Then what about your one small demon of jealousy? It's a small thing. It's a small thing. He can. Not only the greatness of Jesus, he will not only just deliver you from a bad habit, he will make you an evangelist. Amen. That is the power 
with Jesus and he alone has such a great power that's why it's such a great good news he rejects no one even if that's why Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 we read Isaiah 1 18 Jesus is telling come now come to me let us argue it out even if your sins are red like crimson can we read together louder come now let us argue it out says the Lord though your sins are like scarlet they shall be like snow though they are red like crimson look at the blessed sacrament Je Jesus is here do you believe that what is the word of God that comes out from the mouth of God he is telling you directly come now you know when you know somebody has financial problem jobless we will just keep a distance from them we don't want people who have nothing to give us we are happy when people are rich they have something to offer we don't want poor people who have nothing to give us who has a burden Jesus is not like that he's telling come now you who is tired you who is a sinner you who is broken let us argue it out though your sins are like scarlet they shall be like snow though they are red like crimson they shall become like wool what does it mean even if you have committed murder come to me let us solve it maybe you have committed abortion and all your life you are carrying that heavy burden maybe you have committed murder maybe you have committed terrible things still he is telling come sisters and brothers David committed murder he thought nobody will come to know but God did not kill David because he repented he was an adulterer God not only forgave and said he is a man after the heart of God and Jesus himself is called son of David if God is not a forgiving God if God is not a merciful God God will not be known as son of David I truthfully speaking who is David a murderer son of a murderer son of a an adulterer David was that because God forgave David is never been treated like what he has performed that is why 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 we read those who are in Christ Jesus they are a new creation praise the Lord Hallelujah. today when you listen to the word of God voice of God harden not your hearts just surrender your life Lord I want to become a new person let's read together so we are all, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 together so if anyone is in Christ there is a new creation everything old has passed away see everything has become anyone is in Christ they are a new creation Hallelujah. 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 I was in UK for my ministry. In our center in Darlington, this is uh, in near Newcastle. So one day, so many police workers came into our compound. This is our retreat center, Divine Retreat Center in Darlington. They came and they asked me, Are you the priest here? I said, Yes. They asked me about a particular person who comes there and they, he asked, they asked me, is this person is here coming? I said, of course. He said, why? I said, because it's a church. A church is the place for all people. Then he said, no, he cannot come here. I said, why? He said, because he has a history. He has a history where he is blocked to go to public places. Then I said, but even to church 
He said, of course, it's a public place. Then he said, what about forgiveness? Then they said, forgiveness is for you, priests. We are government. See, it was a system. We cannot change it. Once they have a tendency, it's like that, it's always. I said, then what about Christian charity? You know, they, are, they have the names here. This. They understood that uh, uh, I am in a different world. They are in the systematic world where they have fats. So, uh, but I am not speaking on the basis of reason or fats. So they understood that I am not connected to what they are saying. So I said that for me as a priest, I cannot stop someone who had to pray. But sisters and brothers, this world where you are living is so different. But in Jesus, Jesus alone, there is forgiveness and there is new life. One thing these police people are arguing with me. Father, after whatever you say, scientifically speaking, a person who has a tendency can never change. They are like that. So that is a policy that we keep. So it is the safety of the public we keep some people like that. But I said, sir, Jesus can change anyone. Amen. Mary Magdalene, if it is like that theory, Mary Magdalene can never become a saint. She must admit she is a prostitute until her death. That is this world. That is why uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 we read. 1 Corinthians 15 19. If we have put our trust only of this world. We are the most pitiable people. Let's read together. So together. So for this life only we are hoped in Christ. We are of all people. Read together. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all people most motivated. We don't just belong to this world. We have a life after. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just because we are going through a suffering, that does not mean it's forever. We have a God who forgives. Unconditionally forgives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To become priest, it takes 12 years. To become a priest, after your secondary school, you have to study 12 years. So we were 28 to become priest in my batch. But only 9 could become priest. You know, it's very difficult to become priest. Along the way, many will leave. But I had a friend. We were 5 of us joined together. Uh, so this friend of mine so we study almost 10 years together 10 years together we only have one month break in between otherwise all throughout we are in the seminary one year we go for pastoral experience otherwise all these years we are together so one of my friends we are together after priesthood we have been sent into different parts of the world so my friend he was in another country and I was in Africa. So after uh, we became, we studied together for 10 years. And we became priests. We worked in different places. Then it's after another 10 years that I met my friend. We were went for an annual retreat together. We were sharing the same room. And we were praying together in, in the same retreat. After another 10 years. So... He knows, my friend knows me, 10 years we are together as seminarians. And after these 10 years, my friend uh, told me like this, Anthony, you are not the same. So I asked my friend, that means I am bad? Or he said, no, no, you are better. I have found that you have become more spiritual. Then I said, all glory to God. Amen. Amen. He told me, you are becoming more spiritual. I said, we are all on a journey. He knows me, 10 years. 
and he found a small change in me brought by Jesus. Amen. Believe me, he can change. Amen. Sometimes people can just misguide you telling this is a person is homosexual, this person is a drunkard, this person is a drug addict, this person is an adult, this person has this sexual impurity, this person will never change. Let no one misguide you. We are seated in front of the Most High Supreme God. He changed the whole world. Psalm 104 verse 30. We read the power of the Holy Spirit. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read together. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the you renew the face of the ground. Holy Spirit has the power to renew the face of the whole earth. The face of the whole earth. Then what about your small face? <laughs> he can change. <laughs> Believe it. He can change people. Sometimes you are so discouraged by the negative utterances of the people that your son is like that. He is imprisoned. He is always into this wrong relationship. He can never have a change. He is mentally sick. Remember, Jesus can change, heal mentally sick people. He can heal AIDS patients. He can heal people who have anger issues. It's written about Moses. This is uh, in the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, uh, where we have to know that Moses was known to be a person of anger because you know his history. He was, when he was born, there was a rule that all the male children is to be killed. So the mother put him into a small boat and pushed him into the river. So where he could not cry. If he cries, people will, soldiers will catch and will slaughter him. So he, this Moses had gone through all these kinds of pain and at the end we read that he became after he, God chose him and he became a very meek person and as the scripture says there was no one as meek as Moses this is Numbers chapter 12 verse 3 so in Numbers chapter 12 verse 3 Numbers chapter 12 verse 3. Can we read together? Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone else on the face of the earth. Can we read together again? Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone else on the face of the earth. But Moses had a history. Most hot tempered person. He killed someone, see, because of short temper. And he regretted all his life, he ran away. And from being a short tempered person, being a murderer, who made him a man so humble that more than anyone on the face of the earth? Look at Jesus. Smile at him. Jesus, I know. If you made Moses a humble person, a meek person, he can do that in my life. Amen. He can. Believe it. My friend, who lived with me 10 years, made a comment. For me, his comment is of great importance because he has not made a comment out of nowhere. He knows who was I. And I attribute to that or to Jesus. If anything would happen, he said, little spiritual. That's enough for me. We are, we are all struggling to be spiritual. We are all struggling. But even that small act that he does, you are not the same. That's enough for me. Jesus has done it. Something. He will do it. Surrender your life to him. You are in the best place on earth. In the presence of the most supreme God. It's an honor. It's a great privilege to be seated in front of the one who loves you. The one who never condemns you. The one who is never tired of you. 
People will tell you, I am tired of you because you are saying the same story again and again. Jesus will never say that. He's, he's fond of you. Already told me, I am so wounded. I asked her why? Because my husband told me, I am not beautiful. And she said, Father, he told me several times. And I asked her, do you believe that? She said, no, when my husband tells that, my heart is pierced. I think that uh, I have nothing to offer to him. Then I told her, don't believe in what people say. Isaiah 51, 7. Isaiah 51, 7. Do not be dismayed when people revile you. Can we read together? Listen to me, you who know righteousness. You people who are my teaching, do not fear the reproach of others. Do not be dismayed. Do not fear the reproach of others. Do not be dismayed when they revile you. Praise the Lord. People will tell you so many things. They tell you you are foolish. You are stupid. You are a donkey. When somebody calls you, you are a donkey. You think you'll become a donkey? No. One day, there was a meeting. John Maria Viani was attending. He was considered to be a very poor, very ordinary priest because it's only with a lot of struggle he could complete his studies. So among his fellow priests, John Viani had no good impression. He did not even know how to make a good comment. <coughs> so one day, there was a Presbyterian meeting. In the meeting, they made a comment. Uh, John Viani said a thing. So the fellow priest uh, told Viani, You donkey, what are you saying? Then immediately John Viani told his brother, Yes, brother, I am a donkey. Pray for me to get wisdom. Because John Viani was truly humble. He has no problem even if somebody calls him a Longi. That's why he's a saint. I was thinking if we were if I was there in that in that place, they call me you are a donkey, I will immediately say, Why you you call me donkey? Because you are a donkey. Your father was a big donkey. Your grandfather is the greatest donkey ever lived on this earth. Only then we will be in peace. We think that we need to counteract and react on the comments of people. But that is the difference between John Viani and ourselves. We are thinking we are so much wounded when people make a negative comment. When people say something good, we are just being taken up. A true Christian, a true person will not be taken up when people appreciate. They will not be depreciated when people make a comment. We are what we are created by God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God said, this is Isaiah chapter 43 verse 4. Who we are and what does God does for us? Isaiah chapter 43 verse 4. You are, you know we are seated before Jesus. And he's telling. Can we read together? Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you. I give you people in return for you. Nations in exchange together again. Precious in my sight and honor, and I love you. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the Alpha, the Omega, the Great I Am, the Great High Priest, the Way, the Truth, and the Life. Jesus, He is looking at you, and He is telling you, You are precious to me. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that? Yes. So smile please. Don't keep a long face. You are precious and honored. He respects you. You are in front of a God who gives you respect. He loves you. He gives you that respect. And I love you. Is from him. 
let no one discourage you saying no one loves me i'm rejected i'm unwanted i'm useless i i am poor i have nothing no let no one misguide you you are precious you are honored praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord i was in kenya in uh, nairobi in our retreat center in vincentian prayer house so i was very strict those days i was just beginning my mission that means th- that is not a uh, the prayer house is not a residential place that to come in the morning and go in the evening uh, it is from 8 o'clock so they have to be there if they don't come in time there is no space so and if it is late more than 9 we lock the gate so i told them let no one come if it, they are late because if they want to go to an office they have to go in time Jesus is not a second class citizen he is a supreme god we need to give him respect they have to come because the retreat is from monday to friday so they must be there in time if they are late so i told the all indians give them instruction don't worry come for the next retreat every month we have retreat and but if we come for the retreat we also have the the registration card every day they have to take attendance they have to make sure they are coming every day if they miss two three days they cannot attend so i was very strict so one day the uh, it went on like that then one day a volunteer came and said somebody is uh, crying at the gate they want to come in so i went there to the gate by the time they are coming in time but this woman with us three children they came very late by 11 o'clock so they came and said they are refusing to go they are sitting at the gate so i went there to talk to them so i said that this rule is not for me but for you yourself to give respect to god to give in time so uh, you come for the next retreat so i want to give some word of god there then they said no father we did not have money for transport i asked somebody so i traveled all the way from meru from very far so if i go back i have nothing to get just permit to me i go inside i said uh, if i give exception to you what about others so this is the rule for all people then she started to cry with these children what do i do then i i just said let me pray close to my eyes and prayed then i could see a vision that jesus is holding their hand and taking them inside so i said i'm sorry i told them to open they got in for me i'm only a foot soldier of jesus i am not the last word if he say something i must obey so i got in then the lord told me like this you yourself put my word at the gate i will not reject anyone who comes to me if my people come late there's no problem the anyone whom i bring here they have a name called people of god respect them as you respect me honor them as you honor me otherwise you cannot become my true servant since then i have never been strict like that because i came to know god is kind i came to know that god is not the way that he respect that's what surprised to me he has great respect to each and every one of you each and every one of you you are so precious and i am a witness he told me respect them as you respect me because i honor my people i honor my people and as we read in john chapter 6 verse 44 no one can come to me unless my father draws one to me no one can come to me john 6:44 John 6:44 Together no one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me If anybody is coming to this divine retreat center Cheru Kansense you are brought by Abba father you are respected by Abba father remember we priests are never permanent is a private property of God the father this divine retreat center the ownership belongs to god that's why you are here you only know about god is it a small thing that the abba father brought you to to his house 
give a clap to your heavenly father you cannot go to any place if you are not invited abba father invited you Amen. you are the invited guests of abba father Amen. it because it's his house this house belongs to him that's why you are here you feel this is your home because this is the home of your father in heaven your father who rules the earth hallelujah surrender your life to him give your life to him everything will change praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah maria faustina kowalska wrote in the diary he excludes therefore no one from his mercy he excludes no one that means if you know the nine days novena of divine mercy which is here the nine days novena of the divine mercy you can see that where god has where faustina is saying that everybody is included in that mercy everyone for example hard hearted sinners let me go through that first today bring to me all mankind especially all sinners do you think you are a sinner yes. even me i am a sinner only because jesus has hidden my sins you think that i am a good priest but he is because of his mercy you don't see my sins he invites all sinners he ex exclude no one no one all mankind even the sinners to bring to me the souls of priests and religious god has special mercy special invitation extended to the priests and religious praise the lord Hallelujah. so father richard deacon john bosco sister fausta you are specially been mentioned by god in his mercy then we have bring to me all devout and faithful souls you know there are who are so devoted you are so faithful god also invites you to give you more devotion to give you more faithfulness he appreciates that you are devoted i do still remember we had a retreat and i could see jesus is walking from the altar and shaking the hands of some people so i was thinking how can jesus appreciates then i was reflecting then the lord was inspiring there are people who pray every day for priests and nuns praying for the church every day praying for priests i appreciate them see nobody knows that when you are person of prayers who knows it jesus alone and he appreciates so for him the devout and faithful souls have a special concern a special position in his heart hallelujah. hallelujah then bring to me those who do not believe in god and those who do not know me praise the lord hallelujah bring to me those who do not believe in god those who do not believe in god does god reject them no. does god reject them no. maybe a husband never goes to church having many secret wives having many wrong relationships maybe doing so many bad things can god reject him no. so you cannot also reject him bring to me those who do not believe in god and those who do not know me there are people who do not know god does god reject them no. we read second timothy chapter 2 verse 13 Second Timothy chapter two verse thirteen. Even if can we read, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. Uh, 
smile please even if you are faithless he is faithful because he cannot deny himself there are times we are so faithless uncharitable unkind we have immersed in sins sinfulness filthiness impurity and the lord says i am still faithful i'm still ready to forgive isaiah 65 1 to 1 and 2 isaiah 65 1 and 2 isaiah 65 together everybody i was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask to be found by those who did not seek me i said here i am here i am to a nation that did not call on my name i held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good i was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask sisters and brothers your god is going after the prodigal son your god is going after the drunkards the prostitutes is going after the hard heart and sinners the atheists the unbelievers he never rejected anyone when you are here sometimes you are so discouraged by the behavior of your spouse by the behavior of your children as you are seated here believe your god has unlimited power to touch them wherever they are when you repent when you pray when you return to the lord hallelujah hallelujah i do remember uh, one day you know when i sleep i keep my bible beside my bed i also keep my cross i keep my bible beside my bed i keep my cross on my bed so before i sleep i always take my benedictine cross i kiss the head of jesus and i say jesus as i kiss your holy head pour out your holy blood came out from your head into my head purify my head my brain from all evil thoughts as i touch the wound on your right hand pour out that wound on my right hand and cleanse my hand from every sin my left hand my heart my feet as i kiss your wounded feet that blood be poured out upon my feet and cleanse me praying this prayer i sleep one day around 2 am in the night i felt i just got up i felt the presence of god i kissed my bible i kissed the crucifix i prayed a divine mercy because i felt god is around and i slept again after the divine mercy prayer i just got up i just felt god's presence i embraced the bible kissed it in the morning when i checked my phone there were so many missed calls it was from canada from toronto so when i called them back you know i have been there we have a prayer group i requested them for prayer for rwanda for our mission and so on they said they got a because of the time difference they got an inspiration to pray for me and the mission here in rwanda they prayed in canada i felt it in rwanda they prayed in toronto i felt it in kigali Amen. jesus could not stay in that atmosphere in canada he traveled all the way beside my bed to say that my son i am reminded of you i'm here to help you when you pray from here in cheru kansense you are sent back in kampala in nairobi in kisumu in any part of the world god can go and touch them maybe some of your family members may be in the prison may be in a wrong place may be going to commit a sin may be going to drink alcohol they will be stopped and blocked from committing sin and they will be blessed because god has unlimited power he reject no one listening to the prayer of one single person god can interfere in the lives of others praise the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. surrender your life to god if you one single person do that i was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask this is our god this man who was at the pool of bethsaida for 38 years he never sought god god went after him healed him praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord 
God is giving me a name called uh, Scholastica. Uh, it's called a Scholar. Is, is here anybody who is praying for a Scholastica? Scholastica. Anybody who is praying for someone called Scholastica? God is touching that person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God has no limitation. To a nation that did not call on my name. We think it's only if we seek him, he will come. No. Even those who do not seek him, he can go if somebody is praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, that means he is telling, bring even those who do not know me. Those who are born as Christians. Kindly raise your hands. Those who are born as Christians. All those who are born as Christians. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, let me tell you, nobody is born as Christians. We are born as human beings. Praise the Lord. Jesus himself is not a Christian. He is not a Christian God. He is the God of all creation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What made us Christians is baptism. We are not Christians by birth. By mercy. We are Christians by the mercy of God. Not by anything else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's telling. Uh, let me ask you. When Jesus was born, how many Christians were there? <laughs> when he died, how many Christians were there? There was no one. It's after the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples gathered together and in Antioch, they called themselves as Christians. And let me tell you something more. We the Christians are the biggest headache for Jesus. We treat Jesus as our private property. That is why many unbelievers, atheists, non-Christians, they don't know about Jesus. One day, I asked Jesus a question. I was asking Jesus. You know, there are many atheists. I was in the UK for many years. I was asking Jesus, are these Muslims are better than the atheists? You know, those who do not believe. At least they have a faith. I was asking Jesus. But Jesus asked me a different thing. Who are the atheists? The unbelievers? And the Lord did not say anything about Muslims. But he told me about atheists. My son, who are the atheists? They, are, they have not lost faith in God. They have lost faith in you, priests, and in the church. You people hurt my people. That's why they have lost faith in God. If you look at those who have stopped going to church, we mistreated them. They are wounded. They are wounded. And God never rejects anyone. If you ask anyone who refused to go to church, refused to pray, refused to be a believer because they received scandal, bad example, the so-called believers mistreated them. Mahatma Gandhi, the, fa the father of India, was a true follower of Jesus Christ. He had satyagraha, non-violence, because he learned about Christ, but he never became a Christian. Because he said, I love Christ, but I hate Christians. Because Christians rejected Mahatma Gandhi in South Africa. When he entered into a church, they said, this is only for white people. Mahatma Gandhi was considered to be a black person. Rejected. Christians did that. Christians. The Lord says, I have no partiality. Praise the Lord. And he includes everyone, even an unbeliever, a Muslim, a Hindu, a Jain, a Parsi, a Sikh. Jesus became a human to save the whole humanity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus became a human to save all humanity. Luke chapter 2 verse 10. When Jesus was born, there was a big music in heaven, sung by angels. 
What is this song? It's a song of good news. Good news to whom? To the Jewish people? To few Christians? No. Can we read together? Luke 2 10, chapter 2, verse 10. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news. Good news of great joy. For? For? For whom? Once again? Uh, again, this is Luke chapter 3, verse 6. Luke 3, 6. All the people together and all flesh shall see. Once again. All human, humanity. So I just want to say as you begin this retreat. There is nobody who is outside the mercy of God. Praise the Lord. Even those who do not know God, God is so eager to save them. Surrender them to God. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you find some people, maybe your own brother, your own sister, your own parents or stepchildren or step parents. They may be so much angry with God, against God, talk against God. But God is not against them. Remember that. God is not against any human. Again, this is... Uh, bring to me souls of those who have separated themselves from my church. God is telling, even those who have separated themselves from the church, I include them. I had a retreat in Sydney in Australia. It was a retreat, weekend retreat. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The church was full. It was a church they can accommodate around 600 people. The church is full and some people are standing. So when I came to the sacristy, I told the parish priest, Father, I thank you so much that I can understand that you are a very good parish priest, working very hard. Because as a priest, I know, if the parish priest is not active, not taking initiative, in some places we go, people will be very few. Because in these developed countries, very few people attend to the retreats. But in his parish, it was an exception. Retreat is fully attended in that country. So I appreciated him, the sacristy father. It's not because I have come or the retreat preachers. If the priests are not working, people will not be informed. They will not come. That means you are doing great work. He's a very good priest. He told me, Father, I don't think I do a great work. I asked him why. Then he told me, Father, in this parish, for me, I he said, for me, I think I'm not doing what Pope Francis is telling. You know, those days Pope Francis was telling a, a shepherd should have the smell of the sheep. The shepherd should go and find the lost sheep in the wilderness. Those who are not coming to the church. And he said, Father, this parish, according to the book, there are around 20,000 people. You see 600 people, because the church is full, you say it is okay. But majority are not coming to the church. And I have no time. I don't think I'm a success. He always had an eye of those who are separated from the church they are not coming to the church because he knows God value even those people we are always satisfied with those who are around us but God is not like that there are people whom we don't speak we don't communicate we keep outside the boundary of our heart and we think it's fine it is never fine praise the Lord because we read in Sirach chapter 25 verse 11 remember you all love God, isn't it? That's why you came all the way. Some of you traveled more than 24 hours to reach this Divine Retreat Center, Cheru Kansense. Because you love God. You have no problem to take such high risk, such long journey sometimes. Maybe the first time in your life you traveled more than 24 hours continuously on the bus. It's because you love God. And it's important to know the things that bring joy to God. The thing that pleases God. What are those? Sirach chapter 25 verse 1. Sirach 25 verse 1. I take 
Sirak. Uh, okay, it is not coming in that. It is not in easy worship, it is in another version. Sirak 25 1 says, I take pleasure in three things. You can repeat this word of God after me. Sirak 25 1. I take pleasure in three things. Repeat. I take pleasure in three things. And they are beautiful in the sight of God. And they are beautiful in the sight of God. And of mortals. And of mortals. Agreement among brothers and sisters. Among brothers and sisters. Friendship among neighbors. Friendship among neighbors. And a wife and a husband. And a wife and a husband. Who live in harmony. Agreement among brothers and sisters. Among brothers and sisters. Friendship among neighbors. Friendship among neighbors. A, wife a wife and a husband live in harmony. Can you repeat? Agreement among brothers and sisters. Among brothers and sisters. Friendship with neighbors. Friendship with neighbors. Harmony between husband and wife. God is happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why I say this? I have found even very, very charismatic, prayerful people. They are in permanent enmity with their own siblings. And they think it's okay. It will be always like that. I cannot be in communion with my husband, with my wife, with my uh, neighbor. But God says... Those who are truly spiritual, devil is a deceiver. They may be saving the whole world, preaching the word of God, but they will not even speak to their own brother or sister. Devil causes it. Because he always does opposite to what brings joy to God. There are people, they will be very good to the society, to the parties, to the community, to the small Christian community, but they will not see eye to eye to their own brother or in-laws or stepbrother and they live in enmity. They will not agree. And they think it's okay. Devil has manipulated your spirituality. And God never excludes your own agreement among brothers and sisters. Bring joy to God. Do you have a function including everyone? Or do you avoid some people? That you never speak to your own brother or sister? Do that in this retreat itself. You will have a great breakthrough. You cannot bring joy to God. that your brother is preferred than you your sister is, is more rich than you there will be always confusion crisis and comparison God wants you to get out of it the first thing and the second thing love harmony uh, and uh, uh, see that uh, friendship among neighbors friendship among neighbors friendship you know, there are people who are always fighting with neighbors and somebody told me, Father, it is natural that we cannot make friendship with neighbors. Because devil is a deceiver. And God says, God rejoice when you have friendship among neighbors. Friendship among? God wants you to have that friendship. Then, husband and wife. Somebody said, Father, husband and wife means... We are called to fight. Somebody told me, we are called to fight. <laughs> Devil has put this wrong notion inside. He does not want a husband and wife to live in love, in harmony, in peace. A, a woman told me, Father, we were good friends. But the moment we got married, we started fighting. And it just goes on. And thinking it's fine. The Lord does not take pleasure in that. Hallelujah. That is why actually it is for the husband and wife only Jesus made a word of God. This is Matthew chapter 18 verse 20. Where two or three are gathered in my name I will be there in their midst. And when two are joined together and ask for one thing I will answer them. Two in harmony. You know that is the power of the gift of harmony. Gospel of Matthew chapter 
18 verse 19 again truly i tell you 18 19 can we read together again truly i tell you it will be done for you by my if a husband and a wife agree on earth about anything abba father will do it for them that is why they will always make disharmony disunity and confusion among married people because it's an institution god takes delight praise the lord praise the lord Hallelujah. even in the case of job business family children if a husband and wife pray together over the child the child will receive wisdom great blessing that's why devil always wanted to crush harmony praise the lord Hallelujah. again bring to me the meek and humble souls and the souls of little children bring to me meek and humble souls and souls of little children before god even a child is very precious praise the lord Hallelujah. before god even a little child is of great value sometimes we don't value our children we just mistreat them actually father george panekel he was telling me he was had some kind of uh, uh, planting some kind of fruits so whenever this fruit is like coconut they have to the mother keep it for drying so if some birds come it can take it if rain comes it will not dry so the mother used to tell this father george my son if you pray there will not be rain if you pray birds will not come you go and pray before these coconuts so father george will go kneel down and pray to god because the mother told the son pray like that and then there was no rain. So the mother will say, see, you are, you, when you pray, God answers. So this Father George, he's George, Father George Panikel, the great powerful retreat preacher all over the world. He said, his mother made him a, a prayer warrior. The mother told this child, if you, you are a child, you have power before God. Do you value our children? God values do you make them prayer warriors? Do we make them strong, faithful children of God? It's our duty because God values them. Sometimes you mistreat children. Don't value them. Just don't give them any attention. No. God values them. That's why specifically Maria Faustina wrote in the diary, Bring to me even little children. I want to pour out my mercy upon them. Again, bring to me the souls who especially venerate and glorify my mercy. There are people who ex exalt the mercy of God. Who are actively participating in proclaiming God's mercy. God calls them to give more mercy to them. Again, bring to me the souls who are in prison or purgatory. Even the departed souls. For God, the living and the dead are equally his children. Before God, the criminal and the victim are equally God's children. They or none of them God wanted to be lost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why Job, this is Job chapter 42 verse 10. He was a righteous man, an innocent person. He has never done a mistake. But we read that God asked Job to pray for his friends. Can we read together? And the Lord restored when he had prayed and the Lord gave Job twice once again the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends and the Lord twice as much God asked Job to pray over the friends who falsely accused him imagine 
God wanted Job not to reject those who rejected him. God wanted Job even to show mercy to those who were merciless to him. And when Job did that, God restored all the fortunes. Today as you are here, maybe you think some people, maybe your own life partner, your husband, maybe you are divorced, you are separated, your husband abandoned you with the children, maybe your wife abandoned you, you are going through a torment and you think some of those people do not deserve mercy because they were so merciless to you. But the Lord says, it's when you show mercy to them, when you forgive them, when you include them, God's mercy will flow to you. It was easy for God to bless Job. But God did not do that. Because for God, even his rude, rude friends are his children. That's why God wanted Job to pray for those who accused him. And immediately God restored everything back to Job. Again, bring to me the souls who have become lukewarm. Who have become Look, for example, there are people who are very prayerful once upon a time. And now they don't, they no longer pray. They're so lukewarm and tired. God says, even I don't exclude them. Because they are lukewarm, I don't just keep them away. No, I just wanted to restore. That's why some of us maybe have become lukewarm. And he made us, he brought us to become strong. Once we surrender our life to him. Look at Zacchaeus. He was a rich man, a sinner, but God did not reject him. He surrendered his life to him and he became a new person. Not only him, even his whole family was saved. Let's kindly stand before the Lord.